Hi there, I'm Irk, and this is my channel, Get Irked, where I teach you how to invest for the long term. Today, I wanted to do something a little bit different. As opposed to a lot of my video colleagues who talk about all their successes, I instead wanted to talk about some of my biggest misses and some of my biggest dodges. You can always go to my website at geturk.com and follow along in the moves in my investments in play portfolio and my speculation in play portfolio. But you can see that with a lot of the positions I've held, I've held them for so long that it's almost easy to get a really big gain. Instead, I thought it'd be fun to talk about some of the ones that I've missed and talk about some of the really bad ones that I got lucky and just happened to sidestep. As much fun as it can be to focus on only the winners, I keep track of all of the different stocks that I've been involved with so I can learn from the ones that I missed out on and I can remember what I did to dodge the ones that turned into huge losses. As you can see in this video, where I'll cover the top four biggest misses, sometimes you can know whether or not you're in the wrong stock, sometimes you can't. And it's just a matter of doing your research and not beating yourself up. Sometimes you're just going to miss the big gains. First, let's start off with my four biggest misses. These are the ones where I held positions in an investment, got out, and missed a huge gain. And we're going to do it from the smallest miss to the biggest miss. Let's talk about Novavax, or NVAX. Thanks to the pandemic, many of you may be familiar with this play as it's one of the pharmaceutical companies that tried to make a COVID-19 vaccine and it was successful. But before COVID, I was involved in early 2019 building a position. I was able to build a position between December and January of 2019 with a cost basis of $34.77. And then on February 20th of that year, I sold the position at $42.29, which gave me a gain of 21.63%. And that seemed like a really good move because after February 27th, you can see that Novavax dropped down to a bottom after failing a trial. It dropped 77.51%. So I was feeling pretty smart about myself, thinking, wow, look at what I dodged. I got out of all this. But what happened afterward? As you could see, Novavax started doing a little bit better as we moved through 2020. And once it actually got its chops when it developed a COVID vaccine, you could kind of see that it sort of went a heck of a lot higher than the $42.29, bouncing around in the $100 range to $160 range before rocketing higher to reach a high of $331.68, a price difference of about ooh, 673% from where I sold. So I left a little bit of money on the table, you could say. Next up, Build-A-Bear, I kid you not. Build-A-Bear or BBW got a new CEO in 2019 and I knew her backstory and I had a lot of faith in her, but I didn't have enough faith. Between August and September of 2019, I built up a position in Build-A-Bear with a cost basis of $2.79. On September 11th, I got nervous and I sold it at $2.92 for a profit of a little bit over 5%. And as we moved into 2020 and into the pandemic lows, it did look like I made the right decision as BBW dropped down to $1.20. Let's see where it went from there. As you can see, it didn't take BBW very long to bounce from the pandemic lows. And then transformations started to take place at the company. They started to focus more on being an experiential kind of place instead of just being a place where you would buy the dolls. Since then, BBW rocketed to a high of $21, a difference of more than 700% from where I sold. Next up, Billy Billy, B-I-L-I. Billy Billy is like Chinese YouTube. And I started a position in March of 2019 at $17.68. And as you can see, Billy Billy fluctuated quite a bit. So I was able to buy and sell in stages and lower my per share cost to $12.69. On November 19th, 2019, I sold it at $16.40 for a lifetime profit of about 29%. Let's see where it went from there. You'll notice that even though with some stocks that got slammed during the pandemic, Billy Billy had the opposite effect because with people stuck in their houses, they were watching more Billy Billy. Just like in the United States, there was a huge increase in the number of people who were watching YouTube. You can see 
that Billy Billy got a high of about $157.66, the difference from where I sold more than 825% of a gain that I missed. Next up for my worst miss, it's so bad, NIO, NIO, the Chinese electric car company that's similar to Tesla. In early 2019, I built up a position in NIO with a per share cost of $6.46. And as the year went on, it looked like NIO was going to have a lot of trouble. It started to have financial issues. So I sold my position at a loss of nearly 25% on August 1st, down at $3.28. And it looked, at least initially, as if I made the right move. Because as you can see, Neo went down and bottomed at $1.19. Let's see where it went from there. Now you can see in the March 2020 sell-off, Neo got hit just like the rest of the stocks in the market. But as we moved through 2020 and people wanted to buy cars and there was more popularity in electric vehicles, you can see that Neo really started to skyrocket. And it didn't stop. NEO ended up hitting an all-time high of $66.99, a difference of more than 1,900% from where I sold. I missed out on a 20-bagger, and I had taken a loss to get out of it. The moral here isn't just to make fun of some of my biggest misses. It's to show the importance of realizing that you're not going to hit every home run. In fact, you can be in an investment and still completely miss the opportunity. What are some of your biggest misses and sidesteps? Leave them in the comments. Please watch my other videos. Remember to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.